Hi folks, it's an arthropod video. <laughs> Hi folks, so he's in the next video about the ice pods I brought just before lockdown. They bred, which is pretty impressive. And what are ice pods, you ask? Well, they're crustaceans that live on land, sea, and fresh water. We're using the ones that live on land. These can be seen like wood lice, but there's different breeds on. They're great for bioactive setups and can be a great food source for your reptiles. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a simple setup that you don't need lots of money for to get these breeding that you can add to your bioactive setups. Some people love to keep them, which I do, they're interesting. And along with your springtails, these will make a great addition to them setups. So let's have a little look at how I set mine up. We'll talk about them a bit more. And obviously there's different cares for different ones, but they're pretty simple. So let's have a look. So I've just pulled some stuff out to show you. This is one of the this is what you'll need to keep them in, not necessarily this one, you can have a small one or even bigger if you want to get large. These are great, I picked these up for about £2 each here from B&M stores, even the UK must have, just in case there's anybody from America or any other countries watching. And they're basically like a little storage box and then what I'll do is I'll drill holes all around the sides, either sides and then I'll put a few more in either side, left and right. Um, I add this with substrate to your tranchula, soil substrate and some cocoa fibre, you can use peat moss. If you're using anything from the shops, any potting soil and stuff like that, be very careful because some of them have got fertilisers in and if you're transferring this down to your bioactive setups, these could kill your invertebrates and other stuff and you don't want that. So we've also got some leaves that are brought from Vive. Now these are pre-treated so they've been obviously cooped and all the nasties taken on from the wild. I don't usually use these but this is just to show you that you can get set up pretty quick. Um, if you are picking from the wild, the leaves what I do is I put boiling hot water over them then I put them in the oven on a tray with some foil for about 10 to 15 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. With the wood I do the same, if you can boil it in a pot that's great or pour boiling hot water over give it a good scrub. Same again in the oven but for longer I'll leave it in for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Don't leave it unattended and it can give off a little bit of a smell but you want to kill off all the mites and any bugs, spiders, anything that could get in there and kill your eyes apart or even be transferred into your bioactive settles which you don't want so you need to make sure you kill all of that off the other thing I brought is the little bit of ice pod food now this is just to start calling me off I haven't really looked in what it is because uh, I'm a hobby so you know but I'm presuming it's some kind of crushed calcium and some probably some kind of biscuits or protein based food um, a good thing you can actually do is if you've got feeders like um, locusts or anything like that um, I drop them in as well because I've got springtails in. Always add springtails to this as well, they help clean any of the mould up. Um, so I drop the odd dead locust in there if it's died and when I've been keeping them. Um, the odd few do die, you can chuck some crickets in. Even, I've seen people chucking cockroaches in. The ice pods will eat on them. Also the springtails will munch them down so it's a good food, a source of protein. Um, you can add bits of mushrooms, I've been, I haven't done it myself, but I have seen people adding mushrooms. It's obviously different care for different ice pods. Some have a, a bit more speciality care, I should say, than others like your rubber duckies, which are like the holy grail that I'm trying to get hold of. Very, very hard to get hold of. Um, I will pop some pictures in just at the end to show you the holy grail of ice pods as I go on. I am looking at the giant orange ones next. You could add some cucumber to and carrot as well. But at the moment I've been adding the leaves and the most important thing that I think that should be added is the cuttlefish. Now you can buy these broken bags off eBay. You may have other suppliers that you know of, but I've seen that you buying the broken bags here in weeks, I was a lot cheaper than buying just two from like your general store like Petitome and places like that. So you can get a good big kilogram bag for about eight pounds, which will last for loads, but necessarily you don't have to buy that money. So what we're going to do is have a little look inside, show you what I do. So yeah, we're just looking inside the just a basic setup now of how to breed these ice pods. So we've got some wood in there that's actually been baked and boiled, so it gets all the nasties off, which they love. Some of the obviously oak leaves that are treated and they, they're pretty booming to be honest. Um, we've had them breeding 
and we've got loads of little ones which you won't be able to see because they're buried down in there but yeah they they absolutely love this so you keep it damp up one side mainly one side and the other one just spray very lightly and as long as you've got the right ventilation and you keep a good food source in there drop some of your dead feeders in your locusts your crickets um, and your springtails and you shouldn't have a massive problem I'm keeping these at a um, room temperature um, it is a bit warmer up here around 20 to 22 degrees celsius in here good ventilation is key as well not putting the substrate too high so they can escape that's the most important thing so I've only failed this just over about a third of the way and as you can see as I mentioned earlier in the video just drill some holes I've done two sets all the way along either side and then three sets on the left and the right higher at the top just below the lid where it closes because uh, I was having an issue of the building up with too much moisture and obviously that means it needed more ventilation since I've done that I can't complain I've got loads of little baby isopods that I can use and you can use these for feeders feeders as long as you keep these in a separate setup you can just keep adding these to your bioactive setups into your reptiles and from what I've heard like I've said before I'm still a hobbyist I'm still learning myself this these are a good source of calcium for your reptiles quote me if I'm wrong anybody who's got in the comments add any other good things you found out about these or food sources and let's go from there thanks for looking the other thing I didn't mention is get yourself a good spray bottle it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive just want something that holds a bit more water than the little ones that I used to use for my smaller mantises now based on water I have spoke to Scott from Scott's MVT he's had no trouble with using tap water just personally myself I use still water always have done with my mantises and any on MVT sprays just because of the stuff what's in the actual tap water that's not saying that you have to do that but personal choice I use still water so I hope you've enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe like and give us a share thanks for watching